Hello, once again, it is Green Blob here with another second part of our exciting tutorial. But first, I need to remind you to save your project. Obviously, if you lose it now, you will be very unhappy. So just file, save, it will save you a lot of hassle. As you can see, I've already saved mine, but this asterisk means that I have to save it again, my changes. So, Control S and disappear. Alright, in this tutorial, we are going to be animating our spaceship. We already have a spaceship, and it's looking very nice. Now, in order to do that, we need to open our Transform 3D panel. We do that by expanding this button using the plugin setup button. What we can do then is we can actually manipulate our spaceship like we did in the previous tutorial. But first, we need to make sure that our keyframes are set. To do that, go into the Transform 3D properties and click on each of these keyframing switches. I'm pretty sure that they spelt keyframing wrong and then set them to line ear. You can set them to smooth, but this could pose problems. So for this, I'm going to set them to line ear. Keep on going down until you finish the angle X, Y, Z. After that, don't worry about the pivot commands. Then what you can do is you can add, go forward in time, possibly to one second, and move the spaceship and scale it down. In fact, what this is doing is it is actually animating our spaceship as it moves in 3D space. So our spaceship appears to be moving. Now what we can do is we can modify our spaceship to be in a different position once it takes off just to give that more of a give. Now, I'm going to make my spaceship rotate because that's pretty cool, but you can do whatever you like. All right, so continued. I'm going to go forward another second and I'm going to move my spaceship, remembering that Wax automatically sets keyframes. So I don't have to set them manually, I can just go about my work. So move the spaceship, rotate, and move appropriately. So our spaceship has gone from this position all the way to this position. Now what we want to have our spaceship do for us is leave the screen. So we'll go forward another second and move it rather epically out of view. So therefore, trickily rotate your spaceship to an angle and move it out of view. So our spaceship is actually moving in 3D space. Now what you've done here is pretty important. You've actually learnt how to use wax to composite an actual animation in 3D. Now, always make sure that you rotate the spaceship before you set the keyframe because that can be very difficult for you if you don't. I'm just doing a little bit of fixing up here. Okay. But once you have fixed up your video clip, you should be ready to move on to the next step. Now, once we have our spaceship, we can add some nice pretty particles 
to its animation. So we've got our spaceship. Our spaceship is running in, flipping around, doing a nice trick, and then speeding off into the distance. But we need to add a bit of particles to our spaceship. So we are going to go into video plugins and use the particles plugin and place it on top of our model loader. So at the moment, we have particles which are parented to our original footage in the same system as our model loader. So at the moment, our spaceship looks like it's on fire. But we need to change the settings of the particles. One way we can do that is wait till the spaceship is on a good angle. Then we can use these particles and position them so they're in the right position. The way I would go about that is create is going to the particles control in your timeline, dropping it and going into the creation option. Once you're in that, you can tamper with these settings. For now, I'm going to set my particles a second to 1000 by just shift clicking on it and changing the value. And I am also going to set my minimum color to be light blue and my maximum color to be dark, darker blue. And that will be our particle system for now. I'm also going to change the minimum maximum size to 10 to get rid of all of the range of our particles and the minimum size to three. Once I've done that, I can close the creation panel and open the destroy panel. In here, I'm not going to tamper with much unless you want your particles to live for shorter, you would just tamper these color values. What we can do is we can change these color values. In my case, dark blue and actually grayish blue and dark blue. So our particles have a little bit of life to them. Now what we can do is we can move our particles using the emitter control. What we can basically do with the emitter control is change the position values of the particles so they can extrude out or in of the spaceship. Once we have done that, a lot of control zing our spaceship will be ready. But first we need to get the spaceship in the right position. Sometimes it helps to tamper with the controls manually. Now we have a nice position for our particles. Maybe a bit, little bit too low. So, particle system looks fine all the way through. But at the moment, our particles are going upwards. So, we need to tamper with, in the emitter control, the direction values. At the moment, the particles are going up. We don't want them to go up. Change the direction Y value to zero. Our particles are now staying put. We want the, them to accelerate. So change your direction Z value into a minus value. As you can see at the moment, we've got a large, large booster. So your spaceship flies out along with a booster, it flies out of view. Now, as you can see, the particles are staying inside the screen after the spaceship has left. We are going to trim the comp so that is not included. The way we would do that is drag this arrow over here downwards 
to where the cursor is. That way, this is the loop period and the render period of the animation. And we'll stop there and start rendering from the start. So we've created our particles, we have got our variants, we have acceleration, and we are about to render. Actually, before you do render, change your acceleration Y to 0 and your acceleration Z to 0 0.3. That way, particles are accelerating in only one direction. In fact, possibly higher. You can tamper with these settings as you wish, but Once you're finished, you, the important thing is you're satisfied. So that's looking pretty good. We've got some particles at the start, maybe not quite in the same position, but it will do. If we have the particles lower here, it will help with the rest of the animation. So our particles are lively and they're accelerating. All right, now we're almost onto the final part of our tutorial and that will be rendering out. But first, we need to understand the render settings dialog. So open up the project settings dialog. At the start of this tutorial in part one, I explained how this worked. But what you've got to make sure when you render is that you have an AVI at the end of your file name. This is a common error and it has been done before by me. And this is very, very important. Thankfully, if you have debug modes codec installed, you can export different types of file formats, such as SWIFT or Macromedia Flash files and MPEG-1 videos, but I'm going to export AVI. In the options panel, you can choose your codec. I like to use the XVID codec, which you can find on xvid.org. And I will choose the OK button, unconfigurable OK. So I am changed my settings. I am ready to render my video. That is no problem. I've already choose, chosen my output location. I will save my project and I will click the render button. My video will render and it will not take too long. Once your rendering has finished, you're ready to preview your file under the saved location. In my case, I have saved it in this location. And there you have your final output tutorial. Hang around on my channel for, four, for more tutorials and don't be too harsh on me. This is my first tutorial, obviously. And thank you for watching.